People often ask me, what time is it in the church? That's a very easy answer to share. It's time to evangelize. The minute that you just smile at somebody and are kind to somebody, guess what? You're a part of God's team already. Que la familia se despierte, que poder vivir en familia ya la fe. It's definitely way more vibrant and more uh, energetic. There's a lot more focus on singing, on dancing. It's definitely something uh, different from what we have back in Canada. Preparar este congreso significa retomar un poco el sentido profundo nuestro como comunidad. O somos misioneros o no somos iglesia. Punto. Señor Padre Santo, dignate bendecir esta cruz. In July 2015, Pope Francis blessed the Cross of Evangelization in Santa Cruz de la Sierra in Bolivia. This cross, which has a replica made for each country of the Americas, is the symbol of the Fifth Missionary Congress of the Americas. This cross also reminds us what it means to be a missionary. Through our baptism, we are all missionaries. Every baptized person is a missionary. And here it is very concrete, especially with the Latin Americans. C'est lié à être capable de dépasser des frontières. Et les frontières géographiques, c'est peut-être plus facile à traverser. Mais avec mon expérience, les frontières personnelles, les frontières culturelles, les frontières politiques ou économiques sont peut-être plus difficiles à être capable de you know, it is a challenge because many people want to just, they like their life the way it is. But when you can open up a world to people to see, for example, in my diocese, we are able to um, make available mission trips. And once people get a little taste of what it means to work in the missions and to work with people in need, and to be able to be, um, uh, open to something else, they're on fire. And uh, I say they never, they never come back to where they're at. I think that nobody can be happy alone. The other people help us to be happy. So with the poor people, for example, who visit you, who give you something with love for the people. The Pope is doing a wonderful job of, of reminding everybody, like you said, Joe Blow or the man on the street, that um, just being open and loving and non-judgmental to everybody that we meet is really the first step. So I think that's how we begin. And then it's up to the rest of us who um, encounter, because it's all about the encounter, when we encounter those people, to um, continue the journey with them, and then hopefully by our own example, make them kind of want that spark, that desire in them to, um, well, how do I connect that with this person that we call Jesus, who, who Christians also call God? And, and it just, it takes time, but it's just walking the walk with the person. And, you know, I think up at a that beautifully says is encounter is what leads to discipleship. Um, and, and that's how we live it day by day. El Papa Benedicto nos decía, no somos cristianos porque ha sido una decisión ética, sino porque nos hemos encontrado con un acontecimiento. Este acontecimiento ha transformado nuestra vida. ¿no? Y a partir de ese encuentro, seguimos a Jesús porque nos apasionamos con su vida, con su proyecto del reino de Dios. Y la misión es compartir esa experiencia de fe, ese encuentro, esa transformación. Aquello que hace conmigo, o sea, no necesitamos recetas, ¿no? sino que aquello que ha hecho en mi vida, eso lo transmito a otra gente, a mis hermanos, a los que están en mi entorno. Y eso ya es la misión. Es una alegría que nace del corazón, que surge desde adentro. O sea, es algo que, que me complace, que me llena de paz, que me llena de convicción. O sea, me da el placer, la satisfacción de haber hecho una cosa que me atrajo, que me gustó. Y como me gustó y me atrajo, lo recomiendo, lo comparto. Y luego otro, ¿sabes qué? Mira, este plato de comida que me serví en tal restaurante, es delicioso, te lo recomiendo. 
Esa es la alegría del Evangelio. Con Jesucristo siempre nace y renace la alegría. Dígaselo que está a su lado. Con Jesucristo nace y renace la alegría. Nosotros no podemos quedarnos mirando a un Jesús que esté solo en el pan consagrado, que lo está, y es fundamental que nos encontremos con él en la Eucaristía, ya sea en la misa o en la adoración eucarística. No es solo el Jesús de las páginas de la Escritura, que es muy importante que lo escuchemos allí, que lo contemplemos allí, pero todo eso no tiene sentido si no encontramos a Jesús en la vida del otro. The gospel is joy because in it the whole scripture brings us what consoles us. What, what gives us a new perspective of this, uh, to see our life as a, a gift. And uh, the gospel is joy in the sense that uh, in it we find the humility of Christ. I found that myself when I was uh, I ordained a deacon. And I, would, I didn't think anything was going to happen, but I was sent to a mission country where I became uh, turned on to the missions. I, I was a deacon. I did my very first um, baptisms in Malawi, Africa, before I ever did anything in my own country, in my own, in my own language. And then um, it changed me. This conversion exige l'écoute de l'autre, car l'autre est la trace de Dieu. Si je ne peux pas écouter l'autre, Je ne peux pas me construire, car l'autre me soutient dans ma course vers le ciel. L'autre est pour moi un frère. L'autre est pour moi un soutien moral et un soutien spirituel. Todos somos eh, merecedores de conocer a Jesús. También hacemos uso de nuestra libertad, lo aceptamos o no lo aceptamos. Pero para aceptar o rechazar algo tengo que conocerlo. Entonces la tarea, el compromiso de la iglesia, de todos los bautizados, es hacer presente a Jesús. Eso es la misión. It is that sense of mission that has driven millions of Christians around the world throughout the centuries to go and proclaim the good news. And that sense of mission is what is behind the purpose of the Missionary Congress of the Americas, also known as CAM. Los congresos como, como objetivo, como idea, tienen de animar la vida misionera de la Iglesia, el espíritu misionero de la Iglesia que se mantenga siempre dinámico, efervescente, capaz de renovarse constantemente. This being a Congress for America, and it is the first time for the young people to participate, especially in Latin. I wanted them to experience this diversity of our church in America and to experience the energy, the happiness, the joy of the church in Latin America with the other youth and the other missionaries. <laughs> I hope they will transmit this joy and this uh, happiness of the gospel, and they also they will put in practice what they are learning, especially the mission and the gentiles, mission with the migration, and the mission with the poor, especially those who are less uh, fortunate. My expectation is just to see the world church, see another aspect with the South American people, and. Uh, I'm sure I will get a good, good experience from this. We're all working hard to be more missionary, right? And, and my expectations for this is, uh, I guess, to share with everybody what we're doing and learn a little bit of what they're doing, see what can be applied, um, what can we improve on, what is working, what's maybe not so good. Um, so yeah, I guess it's uh, the dialogue, the, the, the sharing with everybody else. The Missionary Congress of the Americas brings together thousands of missionaries from across the American continent. It takes place every five years, and the last one took place in the city of Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia. This is like a great time to reflect with others, with specialists about mission. It's the occasion to share on our experience, to discern God's will 
the mission that has to continue in Canada, what is it with this culture that is changing and changing every every five, ten years now? So this is a big challenge, but we're here to appreciate also that sharing, that discernment, and the light that will come from above to guide us in the coming years to do to be good missionaries in our cultures. Para mim, jovem, é muito bom e eu espero é, olhando todas as pessoas mais velhas e também outros jovens de outros países que estão nessa caminhada de missão, impulsione não só a mim, mas a todo o meu estado, a todos os grupos que também estou representando aqui. For sure, I think some of the vibrancy that's experienced here can be shared over there. Um, I think over there we're sometimes we get stuck in a little bit of rigidity. So sometimes it's it's nice to have a little bit of energy, a bit of discourse, a little bit of uh, you know difference in, in the way we do things. Porque muitas vezes nós desanimamos porque não temos muito sentido de comunhão, de que trabalhamos juntos. E estar presente num congresso que reúne toda a América e nós vermos que em outros lugares também se desenvolvem as mesmas atividades, isso nos ajuda, isso nos anima também a dar continuidade ao trabalho que é feito no nosso país, no nosso estado, no nosso regional também. As one family, one universal church, uh, to be Catholic is also to be missionary, right? We don't just hold the good news in uh, for ourselves, for our own good. In fact, when we do that, like Pope Francis says, we just tend to turn on in on ourselves. But this whole conference uh, is about this universal uh, church, uh, this universal culture of encounter of the Americas that would go out on mission. And I would, I would think that it's not only just a mission in the Americas, but the Americas has a mission for the world globally. Muchas veces yo lo digo a, a mi gente, digo, el mundo de hoy necesita testigos. Entonces, o eres testigo, o si no, ¿en qué crees? The best symbol for those who believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and who respond to the call to be missionary disciples is the cross. Yo creo que es resaltar esa tarea de las misiones jesuíticas. Estamos hablando de los años 1600 de nuestra América, cuando no solamente fueron un refugio de los indígenas frente también a ciertas uh, situaciones uh, complicadas que el imperio español y, y portugués uh, planteaban en su momento, sino que también fue un espacio de encuentro con los hermanos. We have received this cross, this very special cross uh, that has been blessed by Pope Francis in uh, Bolivia. So it's a, it's a great uh, joy to, to, to receive it like a symbol, a symbol of an old story, a very long story of evangelization in uh, South America, in America, finally. A, a story that has been built from the, the blood of martyrs. El que hayan tomado una cruz chiquitana, de estilo chiquitano, que vaya desde Tierra de Fuego hasta el Canadá, para nosotros tiene un significativo muy, muy enorme, porque significa, ¿cómo podría expresar? Significa nuestra cultura, nuestro ser que está fusionado con Cristo. Esta cruz representa también la fusión del, del viejo mundo con el nuevo mundo, ¿no? Porque ahora ya está todo eso fusionado, no se puede volver atrás, ¿no? Y no queremos volver atrás. Porque eso representa a Jesús. The cross of evangelization also carries a deeper meaning. Set in it is a relic from Saint Nazaria Ignacia, the first Bolivian saint. Lo que va en la cruz es un, un cabello de ella. Estos cabellos, es decir, fueron guardados porque en el tiempo de la guerra civil en España, cuando ella fue allá para mm, abrir comunidades misioneras, eh, le tocó la, el tiempo de la guerra civil. Entonces, eh, obligatoriamente, ella tuvo que quitarse el hábito y para quitarse el hábito le cortaron el pelo. Entonces, las hermanas guardaron aquellos cabellos porque ellas veían en, en Nazaria un ejemplo de una, una irradiación de santidad, ¿no? por su alegría, su entusiasmo, su entrega. Y entonces por eso es que nosotros cuando ponemos una reliquia es porque queremos que el ejemplo de una mujer también nos motive a nosotros a que seamos santos y seamos testimonio profético en el mundo de hoy. ¿no? 
I think that uh, it's, a, it's a very strong symbol that will speak to everyone here. The fact that this cross will be traveling throughout the diocese in Canada, I think that will, will bring a special blessing to all people, that will unite us in our own one mission, one church, one people. And I think that is a very good symbol. We are very, very happy and joyful to receive the, the cross here in Canada and hopefully people will start to learn much more about our missionary call. Everyone has a role as baptized, so maybe this cross, this, this uh, symbol will mark a uh, beginning in the Catholic community of Canada. The church in Canada is, is in a stage of uh, taking over by young people. And it's, it's also good for them to know the church is a missionary church. And as a missionary church, and they belong, they have to get the feeling of what mission is all about. They have to interact, because they don't know where they will find themselves. But they, I encourage them to come, so that they will be able to help uh, other brothers and sisters back home to see that the church now belongs to them. It is their time to build a church, a missionary church. The Congress in Bolivia had as theme, America on a mission, the gospel is joy. That's what motivates us to share the good news. Estamos en un congreso que lleva como consigna el llamado a vivir el anuncio del Evangelio con alegría. Pero la alegría del anuncio no es la alegría del entretenimiento, no es la alegría pasajera de la fiesta, es la alegría de la fidelidad. Es la alegría, yo diría, la, la mejor ilustración de la alegría del anuncio del Evangelio es el martirio. ¿no? sin asustarnos, ¿no? No, no, es que, no, no es que estemos buscando el martirio, ¿no? pero creo que es la expresión más concreta, más clara de fidelidad al Evangelio, porque es el camino de Jesús, ¿no? y por lo tanto todos aquellos que en la historia de la Iglesia han sido fieles, sostenidos por Dios hasta entregar la vida, son la expresión de la alegría de anunciar el Evangelio a costas de la misma vida. Today, when we look at the situation of the world, of our families, of our, of our communities, of our country, who were once very Christian countries and now are less and less Christian, it's like urgent care that our world needs. No podemos hablar de una misión que se aleje de la realidad en la que hay muchas rupturas en nuestras relaciones con Dios, con los otros hermanos, en la humanidad y con la naturaleza. Por lo tanto, la reconciliación es, digamos, un elemento, una tarea del misionero que apunta a otros elementos, que, tiende, que sería precisamente este de la comunión. Entonces, la reconciliación nos ayuda a entender que, mirando la realidad concreta en la que vivimos y compartimos la vida, hay elementos que sanar, que mejorar, que hacerlos más humanos y más divinos. Si nosotros retomamos la Eucaristía como vivían los primeros cristianos, es decir, compartiendo con alegría no solamente el pan espiritual, sino también el pan material, si hacemos comunión desde la Eucaristía y no vivir solamente la Eucaristía como una vez al año, misa de fiesta o misa de defunto, sino dar el sentir real a la Eucaristía, Realmente nuestras comunidades reviven de nuevo esta alegría que compartían los primeros, los primeros cristianos. Y mucha gente, tal cual hizo en ese entonces, va a ser atraída todos los días y aumentaban, dice la palabra. ¿Por qué? Porque vivían auténticamente el mensaje y la Eucaristía. En French, we say there's a turn, there's a shift to be made. We've got to change direction. And it's not just to look in a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left. We have to be convinced and have the Lord give us a heart filled with that zeal to share the gospel. That is what is needed. We all, all of us who share the Catholic faith, all of us, the baptized, baptized who are lay people, who are there in the pews, uh, the, the people who are in the groups, the apostolic movements, the clergy, uh, 
everyone, people of consecrated life, we need to be on board and make the shift and say, together we're going to live this mission and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to a world that does not listen to it anymore or has no one to preach it. We have to prepare people to be able to do that, witnessing by their lives, of course. That's the first step. But we need to open our and, and, and have our mouth speak the good news and show it through our lives. That's what we need to do. Each one of us needs to prepare ourselves to give witness to Jesus, how Jesus helped us, how we have faith, and how we can show all the people God loved us so much, and we need to love each other in simple way by taking care of the little ones, sick people, the needed, children, how we can help them to find the joy in Jesus. That is uh, really something nice to do, but we need to be with all the people in different level that they can experience God love them. Jesús nunca tuvo lástima de alguien, nunca. Y yo he escuchado personas eh, mirar una noticia en las redes o en el informativo sobre Venezuela o sobre Nicaragua o cualquier otra, y decir, qué lástima lo que les toca vivir. Eso no es evangélico. Lo evangélico es la compasión, es decir, ser capaz de sentir lo que el otro siente y luego no tenemos que tener miedo de pronunciarnos. Es importante, ¿verdad?, que a los jóvenes eh, se les hable de la misión y sobre todo ahorita con la misión al gente, para que el joven este, tenga otras posibilidades, tenga otras, o, o se le abra la, la mente. Entonces, como en los procesos de educación, por ejemplo, en educación en la fe, en los materiales que se dan a los jóvenes, no debe de faltar la parte misionera. We were in Honduras last year, and of course we visited the, um, the Newton Mission um, area, and that too had an impression for us, so at least we went back home and we tried to intensify, you know, how we can get our young people, because that's where we need to work from, to get our young people to be aware of what's happening in Latin America and in the world in general. So at least that for me is inspiring. My main mission, my main area is catechetics. So, of course, I, when I'm here at these meetings, I also look at it in a broader sense. How can I go back in my ministry and enhance that as well? And how can I sensitize the children, the young people, and the adults as to what's happening um, around us in the, in the Americas? We know who the answer is. It's Jesus Christ. It's the gospel, the good news of his death and resurrection that can put us back on our feet and give us the joy to share with the world, to bring hope back to this world. So this, it's, this is a time of urgency. It is that one-on-one -on -one encounter that is at the root of all mission. We have encountered Jesus Christ, and we want others to have the same encounter. When I decided to enter life consagrada, eh, y comencé una experiencia y un compromiso misionero como consagrada, te podría decir que por la experiencia me ha abierto al mundo, me ha ensanchado el corazón, me ha sacado de mí misma y me ha hecho sensible con una humanidad mayor que la de mi propio entorno. I am very pleased with my missionary experience because I found myself in my own vocation. I found myself as a person. Uh, I feel realized as a person to help the people, to work with them also, and to foster their own values, human and spiritual values. C'est une expérience aussi qui donne euh, le feu sacré. Alors ce matin, se faire dire que l'Église c'est le Christ, la mission c'est le Christ. Il a bien dit, c'est une ligne, mais ça nous redit, recentrez-vous sur le, le, cette personne vivante, ressuscitée, qui accompagne, c'est sa mission, auquel on collabore. 
Donc, c'est dans ce sens-là qu'il doit être plus que présent dans nos vies, l'animateur de la mission à l'intérieur de nous. I see the world as my people. My parish, my immediate people. But uh, everybody that we have uh, and that we can deal with is uh, you know, they're all called to be know the message of Jesus Christ. And if we can bring it to them somehow, or I can enable somebody else to do that, or if we can let uh, the word of the gospel come alive for somebody, um, that's, that's what life's about. La misión es una tarea de todos, no es solo de los obispos, de los sacerdotes, las religiosas, es de toda persona que abre su corazón a Dios. Entonces yo les invito a que abran su corazón a Dios, que es lo más importante, porque cuando uno tiene a Dios en su corazón, entonces es capaz de mirar al hermano, es capaz de mirar al prójimo, es capaz de mirar al otro. Y mirar al otro es construir un mundo mejor, un mundo diferente, un mundo distinto. Y con la fuerza de tu santo espíritu... Espero precisamente lo que espera el Papa. <risa> Expectativas muy altas. <risa> el Papa dice precisamente que la Iglesia hoy no necesita muchos burócratas y funcionarios, sino misioneros apasionados, devoradores por el entusiasmo de comunicar la verdadera vida. We're all going someplace together. It's time to evangelize. How are you and me going to do it together?